a crippling and potentially deadly infectious disease that is caused by the polio virus. It is very contagious and spreads through person-to-person -person contact. Thanks to the vaccine, you don't hear much about polio these days, but there are people still living with its effects. Mark T. Sternhagen from Brookings, South Dakota, contracted the virus when he was just 18 months old. He has written a book to share his story titled Normal For Me. I got the chance to sit down with Mark last week about why he hopes his experience carries a strong message for others. Now you wrote this book called Normal For Me about your life after experiencing polio. Why did you decide to write this? What really triggered it was the anti-vaccination movement. Uh, the title Normal For Me I've had in my mind for a very long time. And People wanted to pretend like the polio thing never happened, like these, you know, wasn't a thing. I had people on Facebook or something tell me that, oh, it wasn't really that bad. And I'm like, yes, it was. It was a serious thing, and people died from it and stuff. And I just decided that maybe now was the time, and I started writing it. And But more than that, too, it's about, you know, growing up being different, whether it's being handicapped or anything, and really wanting more than anything in the world to not be different, to be just like every other kid, to just do what every other kid did. And, and I think that people don't realize that disabled people very often, just another person. And it was normal for you because you had it your whole life, starting right. at 18 it, it, months. Exactly. So I really, I mean, certainly I can look at somebody, people walking and dancing and things like that, and envision perhaps what that's like. But I can't really do that because for me, it's always been normal to have my braces and my crutches. And, you know, and now I'm in a wheelchair, but... Uh, it really was just normal. For those of us who don't remember or didn't live back then, can you explain what the atmosphere was like back in when we had this polio epidemic? Uh, people would be really very scared and, and to the point where like in the 50s it's often said that things that people worried the most about were the bomb and polio. And polio being a summer virus would come around and the, the hot, muggy kind of weather, so it would kind of move up from the south and it would get up and, you know, like in this area, uh, July and August would be the worst months for it. And during that time, if there were any cases at any towns around, everybody would start locking their kids in the house. And you have to realize this was back before air conditioning and they would close up the house because they really didn't know how far airborne it would be. And they, they kind of knew by that time it was airborne, but they didn't really know how long that would be or how far it could go and stuff. So people would stop up all airways into their house, and it's 100 degrees outside with no air conditioning. It's just hard to imagine what that was like. Are you frustrated by the movement by some not to vaccinate their children? Absolutely. I, I, I have no patience for that whatsoever. I look at it and go, you know, how could you even consider that? Um, you know, and it'd be one thing if it was science behind what they're doing and what they're talking about, but it isn't. And you were not vaccinated for that's, polio. That's correct. Um, the vaccine was available, but in very short supply, the Salk vaccine, which is a killed virus vaccine, and was, that was uh, certified safe in 1955. I was born in 1956. But the vaccine was in short supply, and I, I'm from Scotland, South Dakota, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere. And so we weren't a high priority. When it came to town, uh, I happened to be running a temp. It was in December of 1956 when it came to town. And so I couldn't be vaccinated. My siblings were all vaccinated. My cousins were vaccinated. My mom was vaccinated. That following summer in August, during polio season, uh, I contracted polio. No one else did. No one around did. They were obviously all exposed to it. I was the only one that wasn't vaccinated. I was the only one that got it. So there is no question in my mind that had I been vaccinated, I wouldn't be here talking about it today. You know, my mom has felt a fair amount of guilt about what happened to me. And I, I keep telling her, Mom, you know, there isn't anything you could have done. You followed the protocol. You did what was right. I know that that happened. But can you imagine today, if you made the conscious choice to not vaccinate your child, your child contracted polio, which is still a possibility today. 
but in a wheelchair with braces and crutches the rest of your, their lives, I don't know how you would live with yourself. You could have prevented it. There's absolutely no question of that. What message do you hope the readers receive when reading your book? Well, first off, that vaccinate your children. But, it, and the, but the book isn't about vaccination. It's mentioned once in the first paragraph. That's all. It's really about making the most of things, not letting life get you down, and really taking whatever it is you have and make the most of it, and regardless of what that is. And, and to not look for excuses to uh, not do things, look more for ways to do things. And realize your limitations, but push the edge of that too. You know, whatever hand you get dealt, make the most of it. And, you know, I, I won't say that everywhere along the way, and certainly if you read my book, I failed often. And, but the real thing is I got back up and tried again. And, you know, and I won't even say that I didn't have help along the way because I certainly did. But quite, there's a number of times when the, the difference was my just determination to make the most of things. And, it, and I made that conscious choice way back when I was a teenager and tried to follow that. And I really think that that's the message is make the most of what you've got, whatever it is. And, and, and use that in a way that's better for society of people if you can. Hearing Mark Sternhagen's story and what life has been like for him was truly remarkable. You can order his book from Amazon, find it at SDSU's bookstore, or send him an email to get a